Hey everybody, I want to address some uh, things about antibody testing and COVID testing um, that I don't think we've seen before. So this is Dr. Cheng Ron from Total Medicine here at Texas Center for Lifestyle Medicine. Um, so right now, uh, you really have the, the standard of care testing, uh, which is uh, nasal pharyngeal swabs, and it looks for specific um, genetic material for SARS-CoV-2. So it's good that it's fast and detects presence of the virus, but can be expensive. It can have a high false negative. And uh, when you do it, a healthcare practitioner has to do it right. And so, uh, but it allows people to take action fast. And uh, it's also a little bit labor intensive to test because you need uh, reagents and you need um, a lot of personnel to, to run something like this. So the people in, in the labs are actually uh, quite backed up. So that's sort of the current uh, standard. And then um, you have companies <clears throat> that are testing the nasal pharyngeal swabs for genetic material, like Everlywell. Um, they're coming out with a kit they can do at home, um, but it's not available for the general public right now. And then you have Abbott, which tests in-office presence of SARS-CoV-2 genetic material as well. So this is very different from antibody testing. So antibody testing is looks for how your immune system reacts to SARS-CoV-2. It does not... Uh, test for the presence of the actual virus, but rather in how your body has to respond to it due to previous exposure. And even may potentially stage the infection, which we'll kind of go into in a second. Uh, where can this be done? Uh, it could be at a doctor's office or drive through testing. Uh, and uh, there's there's major companies that are developing uh, tools for this and uh, potentially can be done at home in the very near future. And so what's happening is that you have the companies, uh, this is, I believe, SD Biosensor. And um, what they're doing is that they are testing for, um, they're, te they're testing for, uh, uh, you see this nucleate, uh, nucleocapsid protein RNA right there. So it's one of the components of, um, right here, the nucleocapsid protein, it's one of the components of the SARS-CoV-2. Um, and then you, you also have uh, companies uh, such as Bio, uh, Biomedomics, which looks for, um, in human finger pricks, uh, the receptor binding domain of the SARS-CoV-2. So what does that really mean? And so um, Vibrant America came out with this one um, that is that we're using right now that looks for uh, four different things. Uh, not only do you have the receptor binding domain, like the previous company I talked about, and then the nucleoprotein, like the other company I talked about, um, you're also looking for S1 spike protein, S2 spike protein. Long story short, there's different parts of the viruses that do different things, and you're looking for your body's immune reaction to these different parts of the viruses. Um, and so what's happening here is that if you look at this, this is really straightforward. Uh, someone, this is a test result, someone who's been recently exposed, so they're developing IgM across the board. And IgM is the immunoglobulin, or kind of like the bullets of your defense system, that targets uh, these portions of the virus um, off the bat. And so it could be positive anywhere from three to seven days to become positive. And what happens is your body goes through what's called a conversion phase, where this IgM that's right here um, um, will start going down to the IgG, uh, which is kind of like your memory immunoglobulins uh, to defend your, uh, your body against uh, infections will start going up. And IgA is something that we usually see uh, in uh, different mucous membranes like the mouth and the, uh, mouse, like the mouth and the throat, uh, and even in the gut. Uh, but this is actually from the blood uh, IgA. We don't know how the IgA correlates with disease states at this time because no one's really testing for it except vibrant but hopefully we'll get more data to, to know in the future. This is very straightforward. However, most tests aren't straightforward like this. And this is where the problem is. Here's the problem. So you have this other person who tests positive for the S2 spike glycoprotein. But if you remember earlier, uh, I told you in the previous uh, lab companies, um, even though this is positive on the S2, the, one of the lab companies tests for receptor binding domain, which is negative. So had this person test with a lab company uh, that developed the technology to look at receptor binding domain alone, um, the the IgM or the immune reaction towards a spike to uh, spike glycoprotein two or the S two would have been missed. And the and other lab companies that look for nuclear protein, uh, they would have tested negative. So 
Um, that's where my concern is. So you, you may be testing people who actually have um, uh, immune reactions towards different parts of the virus, may, may not be pick, able to pick it up, uh, depending on which type of lab and technology you're using to detect which portions of the virus is right here. And so this is Vibrant, so they test for all four. I'm not familiar with another company that tests for more than this. If there is, please let me know. But I do encourage all lab companies to, uh, to, have, to have this sort of as a standard to test for. And so what happens is this becomes a big question mark that if this person tests negative and had this done, uh, and with this company, and this person test negative with this done with this company, and and, uh, and test positive here with the vibrant America, what does that really mean uh, for this person? That's where that's where this is becoming much con uh, much more concerning. And so if we're using data that's not you know that doesn't have a high definition of this. I I fear that it's it may create more problems than it solves. Check this out. All right, so you have someone who's positive on the receptive binding domain, which you see right here. And for that lab company, great. Um, the, uh, so this is vibrant once again, but if, you really, if this blue is another lab company that only looks at the receptor binding domain, then we found it and it's great. And then if using another lab company that looks at nucleoprotein only, like, like, uh, like I said before, then not great because we would have missed this IgM. Uh, but check it out. This person's IgG or immune reactivity is positive on both. So, uh, so for um, for Vibrant and this lab company in blue, we would have seen that this person is IgM positive IgG. IgM means recent uh, recent uh, infection, and uh, IgG means that this person already uh, converted to a, a memory type of immunoglobulin to help protect the person. But if, if it was done in this particular lab company. Uh, then it will be very concerning because this company will see, okay, well, you know, sir or ma'am, you have tested positive on the IgG, which is basically uh, uh, your immune reaction to the virus, but likely you have not had previous exposure because your nuclear protein IgM is negative. Well, is that is that really true, or do we not just do we just not test for the receptor binding domain, right? So another big concern right here. And uh, as far as public health, that's a big issue. Um, look at this person. This person has a nucleoprotein IgG that's positive. So this person has been exposed to the past, right? Um, but uh, this lab company can detect it. And of course, Vibrant detects all four, so you can see what it is side by side. And if you're looking at this company, this company will be like, okay, well, you've never been exposed to the, uh, uh, to the virus of uh, COVID-19. So this brings up an interesting point. So if we ever do a uh, convalescent plasma uh, therapy, which is basically transfusion of someone else's uh, blood products into someone else who is suffering from COVID-19, uh, critically ill uh, for life-saving potential. And if you were to test with this lab company, you will see that there is IgG in this person. So this person would be a candidate to save someone else's life. If you use this lab company to look at receptor binding domain, which is negative, then then what you see is that no this person you may not be a candidate and so that that this is obviously it's a big deal it's a big implication into um into how we really should be testing uh patients and so um that's the question mark that's right there and this is uh this is the the conundrum that we have with antibody testing so um you know and for all lab companies and for all um, technology companies out there, um, I highly suggest uh, using whoever has the most um, broad uh, analysis of immunoglobulins towards the different portions of the viruses, like this S1, S2, receptor binding domain nuclear protein, uh, then, uh, then use that as a standard and continue to develop technology that's based on that. And so um, thank you very much.